Hey guys, how's it going? This is Yunus and in this video I want to talk about dynamic arrays. So the idea of dynamic arrays is pretty simple. In C++ when you create an array, uh, the size of the array is fixed when you make it. But when you make it dynamic, all it means that it can expand in size during the runtime of the program. Because after you give it a size, you can change the size of the array unless you make it dynamic. So in this lesson I'm going to show you how to make a simple dynamic array and for this example we're going to use integers. So let's create a pointer for integer and we're going to call it expanding array. And another thing that we need, uh, we want to keep track of the size of the array so we're going to create another integer called size and we're going to initialize it to zero because the size starts from zero. So another thing that we're going to do, let's create a separate function to push the numbers into the array. So it's going to be void and we're going to call it push, uh, push number maybe. And we're going to pass a number in it. So I'm just going to call it integer n. So this is going to be our function prototype. The function definition is going to be down below. So the first thing that we want to do, we want to check if there's anything in the array. And to do that, well, as you can see, we have size equals zero. So if the size is zero, that means our expanding array is empty. So the very first thing that we want to do, we want to check if our array is empty. So to do that, we're just going to check if size equals zero. If size equals zero, the first thing that we want to do we're gonna say this expanding array bracket zero that means the very first element is gonna equal to the number that we're passing and uh, important thing before calling the function we need to initialize the expanding array itself so all we're gonna just do we're gonna write expanding array equals new int bracket size so this is going to allocate a memory for our expanding array. The next thing that we want to check is if there is something in the array that means it's going to be else. Well, another case for size not equal to zero is like if anything else is that means if size is not equal to zero, that means there's something in the array. We need to create a temporary array and I'll explain why we want to do that but let's first create a temporary array we're gonna just call it temp equals new um, well it's type end so we're gonna do end and we're gonna do size so the reason that I'm doing this as you remember arrays in C++ are not dynamic so our expanding array has some kind of size what we want to do we want to take everything that is inside of the expanding array put it in the temporary array then we want to take expanding array delete it create a new expanding array that has bigger size that means we can store more numbers in it and the problem is you can't expand it without destroying the array all over again so you have to that, 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 that's the reason why we want to copy everything into the temporary array so we create a temporary array we're gonna do a for loop to copy everything from the expanding array into the temporary array and we're gonna loop um, whatever the size of the array is and I'll provide a diagram showing like step by step what's going on in this for loop and it's pretty simple inside of the for loop you're just gonna have temp bracket i equals expanding array bracket i so all is going here is just we are copying everything into the temp array so after we're done copying everything from the expanding array into the temporary array what we want to do we want to destroy our expanding array and create a new expanding array that has bigger size 
to do that all you have to do you have to write expanding array equals new int bracket size size and we want to add one to it because we want we want we want it to be one size bigger than the previous one after you created a bigger expanding array you can copy everything back from the temporary array into the expanding array so it's gonna be exactly the same for loop and the only difference is it's gonna be the backwards of the previous one expanding array bracket i equals temp array bracket I'll just temp bracket i this will copy everything from the temporary into the expanding in the last step we still didn't add our new number which is n into the array so we're just gonna do that we're gonna do expanding array bracket size and size is our last element and we're gonna do equals n this is pretty much it for the expanding dynamic expansion of the array so the first thing that we did we check the size of the array if there is no element if there is no number in the array we're gonna add our new number as the first element of the array if there is already a number we want to create a temporary array with the same size as the expanding array then we're gonna copy everything from the expanding array into the temporary array then we're gonna destroy our expanding array and create a new one which is which has a bigger size and as you can see I did size plus one so it's gonna have one more spot to put a new number in it then after that we're gonna copy everything from the temp bracket I I mean from temp temporary array into the expanding array and the last step I'm taking our new number that we just passed which is n and I'm adding it as the last element of the expanding array and before exiting I'm incrementing the size that means I have more numbers in it so I can keep track of how many numbers I have so to test it let's create another function to display the content of the array so I'm just gonna call it display and this is function prototype function definition is gonna be down here and all we're gonna do I'm just gonna copy the for loop and uh, the only difference will be I'm just gonna add C out around it to display it and to add a number we're gonna go back to our main let's create an integer called input and let's do this we're gonna we're gonna use do while and it's gonna loop until maybe we, well you can customize this you can do whatever you, you want with it I'm gonna keep it simple so I'm just gonna say whenever we enter negative one it's gonna stop so any other number any number besides negative one it will keep looping if you enter negative one it will exit the loop so I'm gonna ask for a number here so I'm gonna say enter pound size plus one and maybe like a column as well I'm gonna do sin input and I'm just gonna take that I'm gonna call my pushback and I'll not push back let's push number and I'm gonna send my input into that function after I done inputting all of my numbers I'm gonna just display the array all right let's test it out so to test this I'm gonna just enter a bunch of random numbers So as you can see, it keeps expanding, but we don't actually uh, know if it works now, for, for, at least at this point. So to check it, I'm gonna just enter negative one, and supposedly it will exit the loop. And if it, if we did everything right, it will display all the numbers that we entered. So yeah, as you can see, it display all the numbers. And at each step, at each entry, we expanded the size of the array. It wasn't automatic we did manually we wrote a code for it so we made an exp expanding array dynamic array and you can do this uh, to any other type 
type of variable so it doesn't have to be integer it can be string it can be a character and in the future I'll make a video where we're gonna use templates and with the template you don't have to define what type it is right away so it is very convenient uh, you can reuse your code and like use the same code with templates and you can make it a different type you can make it integer string and whatever you want even classes you can make a dynamic array of classes as well so this is pretty much it if you have any questions feel free to uh, post it on the comment section but as for now thank you for watching